it's my, I know what you're trying to it's do. It's my favorite. It's the Sanjay Leela Bansali no, opening. No, no. How it's not? dare you? That what is, is that? Karen Johar. Oh, that's Karen Johar's. <laughs> yeah. I knew what you were doing. I thought it was. He just a, compared a, Karen. Oh, man. Boycott him! Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions of Corbin. I'm Rick. <laughs> Hey, it's, hey, it's like my favorite one though. I love like anytime it goes on. Ah, you like some K three G, K three G. Yeah, but I boycott it now. Because... Hey, have you heard that vasectomies have gotten cheaper in California? Congratulations. Yeah, gonna get one. Eventually, probably. <gasps> Will you? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? It's a weird reaction. You think it's a weird reaction to have your jaw drop about the prospect of having somebody take scissors to your dick? They don't. They don't go in your dick. But okay, it's your testicles. Yeah, it's not Ooh. your dick. It makes me so uncomfortable to think about the process because I, I I know people that have had it done. I know what is done with it. And if you had it done, God bless you. More power to you. You're weird. Oh, it's the least invasive in terms mm. of uh, birth control. No, condoms are the least invasive okay. in terms of birth control. If you don't want to wear a condom, <laughs> well, there's other ways. Okay. Yeah. But it's literally not that big of a deal. Wow. You're weird, man. You don't think it, you don't, it doesn't make you uncomfortable to think about somebody snipping you down there. It doesn't make you the least bit uncomfortable. A, a professional doctor? No. Wow. You're weird. Anyways, today we got a uh, little information. This is about a lady that we don't know of, but it's the life of Bollywood leading lady. Say her name Parveen Babi. Parveen Babi. Yes. Uh, she was uh, one of Bob's most glamorous blockbuster stars. But uh, there's other stuff that I want to learn from the video. But, uh, show, so it's another... How many beautiful uh, actresses are we unaware of that are legends in cinema? At least seven. Okay. Here we go. But we've seen that. The minute I'm looking down at the screen, I know her. We've nope. Se- yeah, we have absolutely seen her. I don't think we've seen her. Yeah, we have. No. 100% we've seen that no, face. No, 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 no. Looks like Taboo a little bit, though. Look at the jawline. No. A Gujarati. I can draw a little bit. Did a little bit, yeah. Right. She wasn't really used to interacting with, um, you know, other people her age. So there was a lot that she had to kind of learn at like the age of 16, 17 when she got into college. Whether it was learning the language or learning I'm a tech culture that, you know, everyone yeah, we've, was talking we've about seen her. Time. No. So um, just how to deal with, you know, um,
by the name of Diara Shara, who spotted her in Ahmedabad while he was shooting there. Um, he liked what she looked like and uh, called her over for a screen test and uh, made her an offer right there and then. And she's like, oh, That I'm used to happen so much. Until I know what the story is. You couldn't take, her, take your eyes off her uh, when she was on screen. There was just something about her that made you want to see more of her. She actually looks a lot like Androni. <laughs> Have we seen that video? Uh, no. Oh! <laughs> but we've never seen her. <laughs> yeah, she was good in Dwar. I remember her in a Dwar. <laughs> You know, economic and social uh, autonomy. She she wasn't coy about sleeping with somebody without marriage. She was okay with having oh, a child. Out of scandal. Work. She made her own money. She was she didn't depend on Amitabh's character for money. Um, and those are the kind of things that we kind of see now. That kind of um, you know um, autonomy that that the uh, female characters have. <laughs> Ever? Wow. Oh, cool. आप किसी मैगजीन या न्यूज़पेपर के लिए मेरा इंटरव्यू लेने आए हैं? Oh, is that Gabar? Oh, that's Alia's dad. very common I'm sure they were not kind but I think the the one thing that hasn't changed from then to now is how the media kind of deals with mental health issues um, at the time that Perveen was going through her illness um, and also at times very very publicly um, you know they called her mad they you know they wrote about um, they said she'd gone off her rockers. They, you know, they were just very, very insensitive to um, what was going on with her. the industry it was the second time she'd done that once in 77 when she left with Kabir um, so directors and producers at the time knew that she could be a flight risk and yet they wanted to work with her because she was a really really professional artist she was somebody who remembered her dialogues uh, really well she she was completely no fast even if it meant that she worked through her lunch break Oh. Oh, jeez. I think one of the saddest parts of Praveen's life was the fact that she didn't have a support system. Um, Most of them don't. The few people who did really care about her, she kept driving them away. They, they didn't know how to deal with 
what they thought were very wild accusations. Also, remember there was very little awareness of mental illness at the time. Like, you know, people didn't talk about it openly. Uh, still is, really. Yeah, still don't. That they, that they researching for the book, um, everyone would tell me, she's like, oh, um, you know, she drank, she smoked, she did drugs, she had a promiscuous life, which is why, like, you know, she went, she, like, she went mad. And when I started researching, I realized that she never did drugs. <laughs> she barely ever drank. She was a social drinker. Um, and um, yes, she was a smoker. She was like a chain smoker pretty much until the end of her life. And she wasn't promiscuous. Like, she had very, very steady relationships. What was unfortunate was the fact that eventually the only aspect of her life that they kind of focused completely on was the scandalous bit. They did not look at her as anything beyond her scandals. Um, and that's, those are the impressions that, that you know, fans are left with. No, I remember her now. Yeah, I do. She, I remember her in uh, in in Divar. Actually, I remember liking her a lot. How sad, man. Yeah, it's it's amazing how stupid people in media can be. Evil. Yeah. Sometimes, like the fact just straight up making money off of other people's tragedy. Yeah, and then they still do it to this day. Of course they like, do. They make the money. <laughs> no, even just even regular people as well. Like they go to these assumptions. Like she's a major drinker, a major, of course. a major drug addict. Like they, like every single person in Bollywood now is a major drug addict. A major. Yes. Like it's like, no. do you have any evidence? <laughs> also, none of your business either. No, we were watching <laughs> a documentary about this murder that took place in America of a man who killed his pregnant wife and his two daughters. And it's just a story of pure evil, and it's mm -hmm. really tragic and sad. And the surviving family, the dad of the, the woman who was killed, and the friends and sister of the woman who was killed, got so much hatred from people. And videos that they had posted of her, lovingly remembering her, there were trolls commenting on things like, she clearly was a bitch who deserved to die, that the dad had to come out and make a public video and say how they've been abused unrelenting, unrelenting mm. by people because it requires no moral compass, no courage, no thought to just type anything you want to type that you'd never say to somebody's face. And there are a lot of really awful people in the world. Yep. And it's very clear that they not only say what they're going to say because they're awful people, but some of them make money being awful people. And a lot of them work in the media so uh we did at least one i love you from what was that from what was that oh uh kudar that's amitabh mm -hmm. it looks like yeah and then we did one with uh your daughters and her daughter oh that that one that, they oh, showed a, she's so tiny they showed her a lot in yeah in this. yeah i knew we had seen that face that's an unforgettable face she's such a beautiful woman yeah and uh yeah the other aspect of this too the the stigma associated with mental illness is still extraordinary it's obviously way better than it was especially when she was yeah. younger yeah. um <laughs> obviously because there's a lot of just more information out and people are just know about it more and yeah, more we've, willing we've, to talk about it but it, it's still nowhere near where it needs to be no we've come a long way from the times where people would 
see someone with mental illness and say, well, they just need a hole drilled in their head so the bad spirit can come out. <laughs> so we have come a long way from that. But like the idea that she got mentally ill because she did drugs and different things is as ridiculous as saying, yeah, he got Lou Gehrig's disease because of the cocaine. Because he was next to Lou Gehrig. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's and taking it from somebody whose dad has battled mental illness his entire life, and my grandma was a nurse in a mental hospital for all of her nursing time. I remember visiting my grandma on the psychiatric ward. So I've been around mentally ill people all my life. It's not a weird thing to me. And it, it's just, it's so sad that for so many, it's because it affects the behavior. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes too, people with mental illness that have manageable mental illness, like if they're dealing with a depression and they can't work, family members that have no compassion about that or friends will say, well, just stop being lazy and go get a job. You'll feel better if you're active. It's like, you don't have any fathomable idea what they're dealing with. So yeah, if you're, I guarantee there's many of you watching this, you either are struggling with mental illness or you know someone who is, my heart goes out to you mm -hmm. and pray you have the support system and the doctors around you. My, my dad's been blessed to have the benefit of benefits. If my, if my dad didn't live in the state of New York and he didn't have Medicaid, Medicare, and SSI, he would be one of those people that's on the street dancing around talking to things that don't exist. He would be. And he'd probably be dead. Hmm. But because he lives in the state of New York that gives him health benefits because he's, he's considered handicapped, he, he has that and has a good support group. But I, it's very sad yeah. that she had a life where clearly nobody around her seemed to understand yeah. yeah and if there's other videos about other actresses or actors that we don't know about to, so we can get a little more yeah insight information uh and what should be her next film of uh that we, obviously we got reka that we do need to yeah. get to for sure but i'd love to watch uh watch or watch more of hers. of hers yeah Div obviously we knew i know now that she was in divar and now we did like her <laughs> yeah i do know that uh and yeah is there something else was she in anything else with big b like uh amir Akbar anthony or yeah, why do I feel like there was another Big B film we've seen that she was in, and she, but she had a smaller part. Yeah. I just can't, yeah, I can't put either. my finger on it. Anyways, let us know down below. Josh! <laughs>